be able to work as long as they feel fit. It can be an issue. Uh, I may not meet the, the needs of whatever the organization is simply because of that. But I also realized that uh, something was different um, than had taken place before, namely that uh, they thought I was older and uh, therefore I should sit down. So I don't try to make assumptions about it. That people are always communicating even when they think they're not communicating. And most people are not hi highly in control of that process. Prejudice can come out in different ways. It just has to be prejudice based on age. And that was a time when I was actually had sent a resume into a company. Obviously, I had the right experience, experiences that they were looking at. They called me in for interview, and I could tell the minute I walked in to the to the company that before I even got into the office with the person who was going to interview me, that I probably was wasting my time. I was probably wasting it because everybody was in their 20s. The guy who was interviewing me was going was in his 20s. I could tell by the way he was talking to me that this was going nowhere, was going nowhere. I think that the the world isn't ready for women and men that have experience anymore. The corporate world is not ready for this. They prefer hiring young people and unfortunately for people that have experience, they look at you when they use the words overqualified. Corporate America is full of insecure people and people that really don't, some people that are in positions that shouldn't be. So when they see a secure, smart individual walk in, they're intimidated. And um, it, it is interesting. You can tone down your resume in terms of what your accomplishments are. I have toned as the oldest member of the group I have toned down my resume by shaving off 10 years, however, and that has helped me get interviews. What that has not helped me is I can't make myself look 10 years younger. Another man told me that sometimes they like to find people without your experience so they can mold them in the corporate way, which is another way of saying that you're too old. The problem with the business today is you send resumes that aren't acknowledged. We'll go back, go back a bit, so about 300 resumes in the local Phoenix market and probably four in-person interviews and maybe a half a dozen phone interviews. Uh, there was one case where a manager asked me how I'd like working with younger workers. And I think he realized he just put his foot in his mouth. And, you know, I wasn't going to go sue him and whatever. It's easier, it's easier, I think, for someone in their 60s to get a position that it is someone in their 40s and 50s. Because when you're past 65, 62, sometimes they're retired and they want a part-time position, they don't need benefits, and it's easier, for, it's easier for them to get employment. But when you're in your 40s and 50s, you're still working and you're, you're working towards retirement. But it, it deserves study. It deserves study and it deserves attention and it deserves some and exposure action. And some and action. Exposure because nobody will admit to being an ageist. Right. They're condescending, they're patronizing, ultimately they infantilize us. And that's not right. And I found something there. The big boxes are the refuge for people like me. I'm meeting more and more people like me. I work with an airline pilot, the next airline pilot, who works in the bathroom aisle of one of these companies. And he pulls down vanities and matches up toilets with sinks for people. And he's the next airline pilot. So it's, a, it's an amazing thing. You get these nonsensical questions like, uh, you know, how do you feel about working you know, with a group of you know, young new people who have all the specialized knowledge? Somebody actually asked me that one time. I said, well, they don't have any knowledge I don't have. So I get along fine with everybody. So. These are the type of things that you can just tell when you walk into a place. Uh, they come out, they meet you in, in the lobby, they talk to you for five minutes, and then they say, we'll get in touch with you, we'll let you know what's happening. So, nobody's ever said, sorry, you're too old for the position. No. I'll tell you, uh, you could be prepared for this. And you say, you know, it's not your fault, you say to yourself, this is not your fault. It's not your fault you're getting old, it's not your fault you're out of work. Uh, 
you can rationalize it all you want, but down deep emotionally, you feel it is your fault. You're doing something wrong. You start blaming yourself. I do. I know I do. And my wife says, stop saying certain things. Because every once in a while, some I say, yeah, back when I used to be somebody, you know, that's, and I'm kind of half joking when I say it. You know, I know I, I know what I'm saying. It's uh, stupid. But in, in a way, I kind of feel that way a little bit, too. Um, it's just, a, it is very frustrating. But it, it's, you know, it's the way of TV. How did people feel back in the 1950s and 60s with TV programs about how America lived? Uh, leave it to Beaver. How many people actually lived like Leave it to Beaver? These are the, I think that kind of thing made people think, well, that's the way everybody lives. And how come I don't live like this? And there's certain people that just have the voice in the media that, that make this... Uh, the acceptable thing. You have to be young and good looking. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm neither. <laughs>